Good. I'd like to call the uh, May 6, 2021 work session of the Jackson County uh, Board of Education to order. Uh, we have a quorum that Mr. Johnson's on his way, uh, but we'll go ahead and, and get started. Uh, we do have a packed agenda tonight. Uh, welcome uh, those that are here and those in attendance digitally. Um, and any visitors or guests that uh, are online. Uh, Dr. Howard, we'll go ahead and get started uh, with superintendent's comments. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Clarency, and to board members and our administration that are here tonight. We have had a really interesting year, uh, but for us to be sitting here before one another in May and having navigated the, the waters that we've navigated, I am exceptionally grateful to our schools. We are in the middle of assessments right now, so many people at this table are visiting our schools, and I can tell you that even with the massive disruptions we've had, our, our school leaders and our classroom leaders continue to just be steadfast at the work, and uh, it's, it's really appreciated. So uh, this is Teacher Appreciation Week, and want to remind all of us that our board uh, had a, a beautiful basket delivered to each school to let them that the teachers and the school leaders know how much we appreciate all that they're doing so a very special thank you to all of our our teachers and, and really the entire staff at all of our schools drivers school nutrition workers and, and across the board um, i'm going to try to be pretty quick just a reminder that our may board meeting will be held at east jackson high school on monday evening that will start at 6 30 but we will have a reception prior to that meeting to honor our retirees uh, so that will take place out in the front atrium so just a reminder we'll be at east high we do have a recognition of east jackson middle school um, as well as some celebrations that we'll we'll be looking forward to put the graduation dates on here for you again intentionally because it's they're usually back-to-back -back nights but this this year um, because we're expediting as quickly as we can at Jackson County High School to go in and start renovations at Empower East Jackson County's high school graduation is May the Tuesday May 25th and East Jackson's is th uh, Thursday May 27th both of those are at 8 p.m. at their school stadiums they do have a backup rain plan and they will limit seating in the gyms if we have to transition to the gyms but uh, a special shout out to our uh, technology department who will also be live streaming so folks who are not able to attend um, will be able to watch it live stream uh, planning uh, calendar is there for our board this is for our upcoming school year this is for FY 22 so uh, Amanda and I worked on this this is here we are at May. It's hard to believe this actually takes effect July in July. Uh, it's a draft. There uh, are some areas that we want to make sure that we get your feedback on just around vacations and holidays. So if you'll review this and if we need to make any changes, we can certainly revisit that. Um, the dates in October, we want to confirm because there is an October break. So if you'll check, check with your families and make sure that we get those dates correct, that would be great. Um, and then the, I'm going to skip down and come back to schedule change feedback if you don't mind. Just a reminder that the June board meeting will be a combined meeting and work session. That's primarily because GSBA will be taking place during our work session scheduled time. So we'll have a combined board meeting and work session. Uh, and I would ask if, um, if you don't mind kind of in the back of your mind, we may end up having needing to have a called board meeting uh, before one of the graduations, which is something we've done oftentimes in the past and it will just since we're not going to have a work session, we'll just keep that in mind. And if there is a need, uh, we've got uh, several RFPs out, lawn care and some other things, and we, we, we may need to, to move forward. But we'll stay and keep you in the loop and make sure we take care of that. Uh, and then there are some other things as well, but just reminders in terms of our, our meetings. Important one there, the work session uh, in August, we would like to propose that that be the date of our Empower Ribbon Cutting. We feel like a Thursday early afternoon, early evening, late afternoon after work would be really beneficial for our business and industry uh, instead of a weekend. And, and since this is highly supportive of our business and industry, then that then will roll right into the August uh, work session of the Board of Education. And that would create another day for you. It'd be the same day. So if that works for you, we'd like to be ready to go ahead and plan for that. And of course, you have invitations for the June 13th uh, ribbon cutting of uh, our new high school, uh, Jackson County High School. So the only item I wanted to spend a couple of minutes sharing with you, um, I know that you likely um, have gotten some feedback from uh, some of our families about a potential concern about our middle school schedule change. And for some reason, that's not going to be there. Go back to the agenda. <laughs> This, the schedule change that we have uh, planned, there we go, for our middle school. And I'll, 
One of the things that we committed to is to get some feedback from our families. And so we pushed out twice, both through Infinite Campus and through social media, a survey uh, of how the families would feel about this and if they, if, if there was going to be a need for before school care. So I just wanted to share this with you or you may have had a chance to look at it. And let me just remind you that the reason we're making this suggested schedule change is really threefold. One, for transportation and the limited number of drivers that we have, by spreading it out a little bit, it allows more drivers to be able to turn around and do a second route if we need to, versus having to spread very thin. So from a logistics perspective, it helps us on the driver's side. Equally, if not more important, in our cluster areas, we have significant uh, traffic issues, both at the East Jackson Cluster as well as the Gum Springs, West Jackson Middle. And with us opening the new high school, it's going to com compound that over there. So those are the, that's the reason that we've looked at, at changing the schedule for our, our uh, middle schools. <clears throat> we did this survey. We, unfortunately, even with two pushes, <laughs> we only got 292 responses. Most of those came from West Middle, but that's, think about it. West Middle has 1,200 students. East Middle has 570. So it's, it's proportionally appropriate. So it's pretty well balanced. Um, and so if you look there of the 29, 292, three respondents, 70% would not use a before school program. So it appears that based on what limited feedback we got, um, few people would, would use it. However, we did meet with middle school principals and they are um, going to meet with the after school care providers at the elementary level, make sure those programs are aligned and they're still going to offer a before school program for middle school. And they're just going to make sure it's similar in the approach that we use at the, at the elementary level. So at this point, we're planning to move forward with that schedule change. Mr. Farmer has worked closely with the schools um, and with the drivers. And we feel like this is potentially um, a, a, a death we need this desperately and it's an unfortunate thing it's, it is a little bit inconvenient i mean if you're a parent who has kids at all grade level and you want to swing through and do one drop for all three kids it does create a little bit of a, a disruption there but hopefully the before school care program will be able to help that so that's that's where we have landed with that and so is this an action item it, Monday night? it doesn't have to be an action item it's administrative okay. i mean we can it's just an administrative yeah, yeah, yeah. decision, yeah. but we'll handle it, and we'll handle it if the feedback. So I did have some questions about uh, cost and stuff like that. When will, when will that be announced? Or? The cost for that for school program? Yes. That's a great question. We we started out on the high end. It will not be $35 an hour. We're looking at, we looked at relatively compared to the way our elementary structures, they charge $7 a day. Okay. And so it's thirty five dollars a week, okay. but it's for much longer. So we were looking at a max of twenty dollars a week if you pull the bundle time. So uh, that is the information that they're, they're working with when they get with the elementary principals okay. to make sure it's aligned. But it's a great question. And, and no, another question yes. was sorry. No, um, it's fine. So what what will be what will they be doing during that time? The, the goal will be for them to do use that as a really a tutoring session in the yes. study hall. So there'll be teachers or care pros there yes. who will, be, they're not going to go hoard them in the gym. They're yes. going to put them in classrooms and okay. do work with them like okay. we would in an after school program. Okay. So it would be kind of a before school care. That's what I said, but. Yes. And I hope I I believe this is it's a great opportunity to catch up or to, you know. Yeah, you're right. So. And you know, one of the things that we've learned, and I don't want to belabor, but. Uh, because of COVID this year, we did not put all the kids in the gym or in the cafeteria. And our principals say they don't ever want to go back to that. They, like what we've learned about letting kids go onto the classroom and start work, and just having 25 kids, 20 to 25 kids in the classroom setting is better than having 300 in a gym. Yeah. That's just where things get a little bit elevated. And so one of the un unanticipated you know, things we've learned that we probably won't go back to. It's a great question. All right. Facilities team, I'm going to turn it over to you. We've got several items to talk about here. We do. Thank you, Dr. Howard and board members. Good evening. We'll take a look at the monthly project report. That's great. Sure. Um, we start out on there with the, the high school and progress on it. As you can see, we're getting to a lot of 100% on there. So it's it's moved along well. We got a lot of furniture coming in the building now. It's really starting to come together. Uh, 
next week we got some IT infrastructure going in. Um, pretty excited about that. Just a little tidbit on some of the other things going on. We still got these metal outside uh, in power. Phase two, we've started working on that. We had some of our first meetings today as far as we've got weekly scheduled meetings on that to make sure we're good to go as soon as, as, soon as the kids get out of school. Let's move the parking lot. Um, plans are approved. We've got the permit. Uh, we'll be, I've actually got a meeting tomorrow, a pre construction meeting with the team on that. We're going to See if we can work to get started just a little early on that one to make sure that we've got enough time on it. So that one's good to go on the first day of school. Um, got all those mobiles going in during the summer over there. Right. We need a parking lot so they have somewhere to park the first day. Um, you can see the funding report on the high school there. Next up, we got uh, oh, it's a power, and then we got some really great pictures this week. Um, some nice drone shots. Um, you can see the campus is really, really coming together. It's, it looks looks great over there now. I did get to walk through with a student yesterday. That was pretty fun. Awesome. Yeah. The one who's going to be speaking at the ribbon cutting. Yes. Great. Yeah, that was. It was pretty exciting to see. Did he like three, it? Uh, yeah. Okay. To, to see those reactions when they walked through the three. Yeah. See the field house in that one at the end of the yeah. field. Still still on beautifully as well. It is coming on well. We're on schedule for it. Probably about mid May of getting the seal on the field house. We got. Um, Fire marshal coming next week on the on the main hill. Right. A few other photos that we threw in from the interior, but the aerial is spectacular. Yeah. There's the cafeteria. Gyms. Pretty much complete. I'm going. Ready to get some people in. There. I know. I think there's some people ready to get in there as well. There are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the auditorium is like really, I mean, it's, it's pretty spectacular. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful facility. Right. Any questions on the monthly report? Josh, with the um, handicap access ramp, is they have the design, so their nanny is getting the pilot. The so we, we have the design now, um, the official design. You know, we have sent it out for. A um, estimate or budget price from sub. It's, they're bidding it out now to get started on that. It probably will not be complete by the ribbon cutting, but will be by the start of school. Hopefully, yeah. Okay. That's our goal to get it in by the start of school. We, we shifted from concrete on that thing to bleacher material. Just ended up working out better than the other thing. They have, they have an idea of what it's going to be. Price wise? No. Or design. The design. So we're coming off the edge. The side of the bleachers where you know, the middle of the bleachers where the flat spot is. Yes. You know, come on on the field house in and then it yeah. it snakes back and forth down to the to the edge of the track. Right. Okay. Any any updates on the offside improvements with the Jackson County Board of Commissioners are completing the, any of the any updates on any of that, any pedestrian. I was asked by some folks that live across the street, could they anticipate? You're talking about the Skelton Road realignment? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, sorry about that. About cycles. walking to school, they were asking me about, about that. At a meeting last week, I believe it was, or early this week, it's hard to remember. It's last week. Uh, we went with uh, county folks, with their engineers, and with water sewer representatives. And there's still lots of discussion to make sure that Water Tower Road and School all are uh, cooperating and working together well where everybody maximizes their 
potential there. Um, as far as the sidewalks on Skelton on the other side, I haven't heard anything lately other than Kevin Pope mentioned it again in that meeting that okay. was on the document. Okay. And I do know right now they're in conversation trying to figure out the road and striking. Uh, they were looking at maybe overlaying before we strike, maybe overlaying from pulling that brick pad. Yeah, nice, nice piece if they did that. It makes it so they ought to anticipate riding, riding the school bus, uh, if I'm hearing what you're just saying. Start to start the school year, I would just plan for that. Or they should. Right. Okay. Right. okay. The next item that we had was the construction project delivery method for our new school. And uh, Josh can go into it, but I wanted to preface it just a little bit on to help with why we recommend the construction management at risk. I sent some numbers that I received in the first quarter the other day to Dr. Howard and Mr. Batman. So these are year-over-year -year increases that most of us are pretty aware of, but structural steel, 107% increase in quarter-to-quarter. -quarter. Steel joists and decking, 96%. Dimensional lumber, which we all hear about all the time about wood, 195%. OSB board, 297%. Uh, asphalt materials are rising at an average of 4% monthly. Uh, producer price index is rising about 1% a month. So uh, our, our feeling was, in fact, also look, look at the front page coverage on CNN today. The lead story is that structural steel has increased three times in the last year, threefold in that. Uh, and there's another article right below it about wood products and what it's meaning to add to that cost of the house an average of about $36,000. So crazy numbers right now. So our, one of our thoughts, one of the advantages that we think of seeing at risk is that during a dynamic time like that, when you're seeing these kinds of increases, you have a better chance of anticipating getting good prices. Even if it's not terribly way in advance, you still get uh, and anticipate better and try and cover ourselves. Our fear, Josh, you want to talk about our bid? Yeah. So right now, from what we're hearing with everybody on our bid as well, is they're not standing behind price increases at all. Uh, you can't blame them with the way the market is right now. So the fear of getting into the project and, and a month later getting hit for pay still just went up 30%. Um, at least to see them, you get those numbers up front. It's a whole lot more transparent up front as far as it broke down. Um, it's a whole lot better communication at that point. And um, a contingency. And have yeah. a contingency. Yeah. Um, the other thing is we feel like from where our plans are, we're in a good spot of bringing somebody on board and being able to maximize whichever direction we go with the building and get them in, getting them involved pre-construction wise will be a cost saving. Any questions we can answer on that? Well, um, I know we spoke offline uh, prior, Dr. Howard and I have about this, about this and uh, I understand kind of where you're coming from and, and what you're saying, and I don't, I don't, I don't dispute any of that. I, I believe there is, you get some of the, some of the same on the other side. I, I'm of the, uh, the belief that once we've got to figure out what it is we're, we're building, and and whether it's a middle school, elementary school, on a pre-graded site, on a uh, site that's yet to be determined, that and, and look at the value. And, and the different parameters of the work, then I, I think that's really the best time to, to decide. You know, as we move forward with, with the schools that we have to build, my only concern is I know that uh, whatever whatever process we we choose, that uh, if we go see them at risk, uh, you guys will, will pick who you think is the best value. I, I don't I don't question that. Um, and I do know the inherent risks 
with the low bid and there are techniques that can be integrated into that process so everyone ought to just kind of know that once you get above a certain value and a size of the school then it really just kind of comes off the table um, so that's 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 kind of where I'm I'm at. I, I trust that the architect's going to put together a set of plans. And we're going to build what what our kids and our community expects. Um, so I I would just like to. That's my opinion. I, I think it's a better once we know what, what we're doing. It's just a basic elementary school. Just for everybody to know, if it's just a basic elementary school, it's a little easier. If it's middle school. A, a basic elementary school on a pre-graded side is, is, is pretty basic. Uh, that is common. Uh, districts in, in Georgia and North Georgia use the competitive, true competitive method. Uh, and it works. If you do middle schools and bigger expansive sites with a lot of different parts, then it's just not, it's not practical. Uh, I don't, I mean, I don't think. Um, and that's what you'll see if you look around other places. So that's just that's kind of where I'm at. So we've been involved in both the design and build and uh, all the processes over the years. And to me, it's just a lot about timing and type of project. Right, it's about value. So you know, the only key to this is that we get the project delivery method to Georgia DOE before we send plans. So we need to hold it and okay. define a little bit more. That's fine. Uh, it's like more of just a notification to them at this point. But uh, I think, given the discussion that we're having even this afternoon and yeah. up to tonight about yeah. what the right project to build, it you know, doesn't bother us in the least to hold it for a little bit. So I think w one thing, just to kind of mention that uh, Dr. Howard and I discussed uh, very briefly that we ought to be prepared for as a, as a, as a board and you guys, um, staff, that we may have to purchase some things and take delivery of things. And we might have to secure a location to accept those and have them secure in order to secure our pricing, as, yeah. as they mentioned earlier in their presentation. Even on negotiated projects, people aren't holding holding some of their pricing yeah. with signed agreements, signed purchase orders. If you haven't paid a deposit or taken delivery, they're not holding their pricing. So things that we, we haven't encountered. Uh, and the issue with the inflation that you mentioned um, that we're, we're experiencing, we're still not at a level of, of, of consumption, say, of concrete that we were pre-real estate recession. We still haven't. See, so people think as busy as it is, when you think of Metro Atlanta, we still are not producing ready mixed concrete the levels that we were pre-recession. But you can't, they've canceled pours on Saturday. Uh, the price is, is going through the roof. They can't receive Portland cement. Um, no, we have no bus drivers. They have no truck drivers. Um, so we're seeing, we're gonna probably have to be prepared to do some things that we've never done before. So I, I would just look for you guys to kind of advise us on what, what you think is going to be best and what other schools are doing. I mean, we're not the, we're not the only system experiencing this. So, so I would just offer that. Totally agree with you. We had a meeting this morning, our project manager mentioned that pre buying and storing that they're having to do and something you normally would wait four months to order. And now they're yeah. doing it. And figure out where it's stored. Yeah, figure out where it's stored. Yeah. Keep but it secure and safe and not damaged. Yeah. Crazy right now. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to jump into a different subject for a moment, but Dr. Morris uh, has some things to share with you. We had the benefit of sitting in wellness committee meetings with her and her leadership, and pretty exciting what she has, I think. So, here we go. Good evening. You'll find me in the agenda of three tabs of the wellness policy. Um, there you'll find the wellness policy itself, the world policy, and it, it was adopted in 2006. It was last reviewed in 2012. 
what's used uh, is a fairly standard, uh, fairly standard policy, uh, one that is pretty generic that you'll find used in the majority of our school systems. And then to accompany that, we have the wellness procedures that are a little bit more specific for Jackson County Schools. And they too are very, very general, very generic the type of uh, procedures that you're going to find in many systems. And as a committee, we are up, we are required to have a wellness committee as a county, and that committee can, cannot have any less than two meetings per year. So we had our two meetings this year, and one of the things that we do as part of those wellness committees is, is to take a look at the policy and make sure it is still one that is very relative, and we take a look at our procedures. And under the procedures, the committee did make one recommendation this year. If you scroll down, you'll find that I like this lady. And it is sort of, it has a, a COVID twist in nature. <laughs> and that is that we'll discourage students from sharing and trading their foods or beverages. Um, we'll take a hard line of that. Kids like to share, they're very generous, they like to give and they like to take, particularly in the cafeteria. So that's one of the things that we do want to put a little emphasis on, is making that more restrictive for them to do and bringing that to the teacher's attention about the needs of this procedure, and concerning this procedure is, um, for them to take a look at. Everything else here hasn't changed. That is the only change that our committee was recommending for this year. As you review if you find things that you would like for us to take a look at, please don't hesitate to let us know, and we will take a look at those items. In addition, school systems across the nation are required to do a training, a training and assessment, and actually ours was due last year, the last school year, due to COVID, we requested a waiver from the USDA to put it off until this year, and we have until June June 30th, 21, in order to conduct our training and assessment. So that was one of the goals of our wellness committee this year, one of the responsibilities that was on the table, and that we, we, that we took a look at. We took, we stood at our first meeting, we looked at a model policy. It was a model policy from the USDA, and it had all of the components that a school system should look at in designing their wellness system. And we evaluated where we were with that model policy. And we went in and we, the language was a little different on several things, but as far as having the components and the requirements, we were right in line with the model policy. And then we took that model policy and we looked at what we are actually doing in Jackson County Schools, what our day-to-day -day operations consist of, and how we address the our wellness initiatives as defined by our policy, and by our procedures. There are three basic categories on nutrition education, and we have our nutrition goals and our promotion goals. We have our school-based activities that promote our wellness goals. Then we have our physical education goals. Right? Uh, there's a whole uh, area related to physical education. And then the third area talks about nutrition guidelines for all foods and beverages that are sold in the schools. If you take a look through, through the assessment, you'll find that we have whether our goal was completed or in progress, and then we had the number of buildings that we felt were compliant, and then you'll find the, a variety of auxiliary notes to the side that support the decision that was made by the wellness committee. At the bottom, you'll find the summary, where we summarize um, where we felt like we were. The majority of our schools in 100 or 100 percent compliance with our wellness policy, particularly our elementary schools. We find that we have most of our concerns and most of the areas where we were in progress at a high school level because of our vending machines, uh, the, the, the presence of our vending machines and the items that are being sold in our vending machines have to be considered as part of our wellness initiatives and how we and the items there go go with or, or against our rating. And so we do have that is a work in progress for us. Another thing that's a work in progress are our food promotions and the items that are sold um, before school and after school and of course during the school day. But overall as a system we are doing very, very well. COVID 
almost those potatoes that come go get some of the things and some of the processes and procedures that we will utilize uh, in our wellness initiatives. And honestly, like in many other areas in our, in our schools, there are some things that we put into place when COVID that we won't go back to. Uh, we found that they were, they were better. Uh, the processes and procedures were healthier and safe, safer for all of our students and our staff. And so uh, those are things that we'll take a look at. Our school system does, puts a lot of emphasis on social emotional learning, which is a, another component of wellness for both our employees and our students and their families. So with our work with our seven mindsets and other items that we really, really encourage good relationships with our teachers and our students, all of that contribute to our wellness, to the value of our wellness in Jackson County Schools. So, you should be very proud of the work that's being done in the schools. Everyone is doing a great job. And what is not perfect is a work in progress. We're still be working to do better each day. If you have any questions or concerns in relation to our wellness policy and procedures or the training process, please don't hesitate to reach out. While we have Dr. Morris, my ask about the summer meal program. So, so that is, I understand USDA is. Extended. They have. Okay. They have. And, and I'm sure you probably broadcast it out, but do you mind just telling me so I know? Of uh, course. Thank of you. Course. Yes, we will be participating in the single summer feeding option that's authorized by the USDA. And that means that we can provide meals to our students traditionally in areas that have a free and reduced lunch percentage of 60% or, or more. This year, we'll be able to provide those meals access to both breakfast and lunch to all students all throughout the county because we are taking advantage of the USDA waivers that eliminate area eligibility. So every, every area, every address in Jackson County Schools allow the student to partake of the meals this summer. We're having a dual program, so to speak, this summer because of remediation. Um, we will be offering our traditional seamless summer program that has been housed out of Jackson, East Jackson High. It begins June 1st and will, will extend to July 23rd. It will have the normal mobile routes, uh, transportation is working with us, we'll have the five mobile routes that we utilized last summer. We actually increased our mobile routes last summer due to the, the unprecedented times of COVID, so we're going to keep those same routes in place this summer. But we're adding an additional layer with remediation. We'll be utilizing Gum Springs Elementary School the week of June 7th, the week of June 14th, and the week of June 21st in order to offer meals, both breakfast and lunch, to all of those schools on that side who are doing have remediation programs. Now, when those, we will close Gump Springs at the end of July, at the end of June. But East Jackson Comprehensive High School, that program will remain open for the duration of the summer. We are not going to serve, we are not going to have meal service on Friday, but we're doing two meals on Thursday. Everybody's tired. Everybody, particularly in school nutrition and transportation, they've been working the whole time. And so in an effort to encourage some people to work with us, we built in a three-day weekend. So the guidelines allow us to do multiple meal, multiple day meal service. So our standard menu on Friday will be a PBJ. Every Friday the menu is a PBJ. So when they get their Thursday meal, they will also get a Friday meal of the PBJ. We will be servicing the Boys and Girls Clubs of Jackson County, both locations, Jefferson City and Commerce City. I work with Mayfield Dairies. They're going to bring a cooler, a little cooler, to both of those locations so that we can work with them and get their meals on Thursday that they will meet on Friday. So we'll be serving meals, we'll be offering meals for five days a week, but we will only have bus routes and service four days a week with that Thursday meal or two. Thank you, Dr. Morris. And all of that is at no cost. Yes. And it doesn't matter where the child is from, yes. a child is a child. We'll serve every child that presents him or herself to us under the age of 18. It, it's, it's something that's 
needed to a lot. We may not see it. And so I, I do appreciate transportation as well, the work that you do and have done. So I, I, I do thank that motion. Mr. Hollett, I think we all recognize that we are very fortunate to have the commitment yes. of yes. Dr. Morris. I mean, she yes. just genuinely goes above and beyond all the time. Yes. <laughs> so thank you very much. All right. I want to keep reminded. Uh, Mr. McCord said he's good till about 645 or 650, so I think we go and then we'll see how far we can get and then we'll take a pause. Sounds great. I'll uh, want to give you just a quick update. I think the insurance updates is next. Yes, sir. Uh, we've met with both our property liability vehicle side of the insurance risk management as well as our workers' comp. And generally, this is just generally speaking, but property owners' premiums are increasing in the range of 8 to 15 percent this year. Primary mover on that is the fact that um, reinsurance premiums have gone up and that low investment income is not uh, balancing well with their underwriting losses. So we're starting to, we expect some increase on that side of it. We've updated our facility schedules, our, all of our valuations. We're actually on our property just under 297 million now valuation it's pretty amazing and then on workers compensation one of the great news is that wow, us, uh, even with increased payroll and with reduced mine rate which is helpful we should see about a four percent reduction in our premium this year so uh, don't have final numbers on that we'll have them for you at the next board meeting for approvals but we thought it was good information at this stage of the game what do you what do you attribute that Reduction in just your not is it all in your yeah, moderate? The moderate yeah. Yeah. yeah, that means we're being safe. Yeah. Really are doing mm -hmm. really well, and Liberty Mutual's been a great company. They do some of our others, so we'll bring that again next month to you. Any other questions? That nature, sir? The next one is a real standard uh, facility use agreement. It's from that same organization, Top Flight. Volleyball at South Jackson. This is their continuing through the summer request, and uh, the staff has signed off on it. It's just fine. And then, Josh, you want to do the next one on the staffing? Sure. Um, this one is a Romero staffing company. Um, so, that everybody knows the struggle we've had with, with hiring, um, especially in our lower end positions or lower paying positions. Um, Right now, we've got a little over 20 custodial positions open um, and really struggling to fill those. Ted and I have been talking with, with this company for, for several years now, back and forth. Um, there's some neighboring districts that, that they partner with. Um, their specialty is, is custodial. Um, it's not a contracted service like you hear you know we're not contracting out the custodial service this is more like uh, what we do with ESS it's just a staffing company uh, the difference in this one is is they're gonna they'll provide the people and the training the uh, it's it's kind of three different companies it's partnered with it's a staffing company it's a it's a custodial uh, training and basically design company that, that will come in and map out the building. Everybody gets a detailed schedule of where they're supposed to be, what they're doing. Um, they supervise the people, handle all the HR issues, and then we provide the equipment. Um, through our agreements with that janitor, we still provide the equipment, chemicals, all that stuff. Um, we'd like to go forward with this on the new high school. Do uh, one school that'll that'll really help us out in our. You know, we're looking at 13, 14 people uh, that would be like in that building. So it's a year-long agreement. You know, we can of course we can opt out at any point, but we would like to take this approach with mm -hmm. Who are some of the other districts in this area that use them? So Barrow County is using them. They've been using them for about four. So would, would we be mixed then? Um, what the staff we take from the current high school 
will they be transferring over? Or so, so actually, the, I mean, the current high school is still there. The square footage is still there. Everything, I mean, it's, the staff that's there is still going to be needed there. Um, there's really no, from a from a custodial, from an operation standpoint, we're, we're opening a new school from that standpoint. So we still got to operate the old one. So nobody's going to lose their job. Oh, no, exactly. Yeah, that's the best part. That's I'm just trying to make sure everybody understood that nobody's losing their job. We need to even not, know. Not at all. So, so will we have someone on site then that so manages them? So we would still have our 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 people, our plant manager, our maintenance guy, uh, and then you know they're also the plant managers in charge of the way the building functions. They'll still be our person on the side. Um, the head custodian will actually be employed by Premiera. Everybody custodial wise will be their person. Um, you know, we it's it's weekly meetings. We're still in charge of like I mean inspections, hours. All that stuff. So I wrote through the contract, and so it says you guys get to pick still who comes in. Absolutely. Yeah. So there everything goes. still goes through background check. Everything. And I think I so they'll they'll they they screen, but then they send us. Absolutely. Okay, this is who we think. What do you guys think? Absolutely. Yes. We have in our HR department so used to doing that. I think they can spot any issues. Pretty quickly, mm -hmm. sure. and again, if this was a district-wide issue, it would be substantially more. But we're talking about 13 and 14. So our hope is to have everybody in place <coughs> first of June when we actually occupy the campus with administrators. Right? You can start cleaning at that point. I don't know if we'll have all of them there at that point. But and we do no benefits, or there was not none of that. We don't have to pay any. No, any no. Of course, you know there's. They make their money. There's a premium on yes. the hours. Yes. Like, um, it says that on yeah. things. The final page. And there. if you know, and they're, they're, everybody's going to have instances where you know, if it's if they're if they're fully staffed at 13, you're going to have days where they're 10. Sure. The the difference in this scenario, you would be paying for those three. So what if? And this is just this is a, a what if. But so at South Jackson, we have. A weekend or whenever uh, extracurriculars they're on camp on site. Mm -hmm. So are they gonna same thing? We would schedule them. Uh, okay. You know, because you know, anytime anybody works outside the norm, they get overtime. It would be the same deal. Yeah. That's, That's good. We're oh, go sorry. We try to treat even our ESS employees. We treat them as our people. Sure. Sure. That's what I was gonna say. They they really are, are intent on us branding this as our program and our our people that means a lot to us sure. uh, and the other thing is they're very well aware of high school activities daily and weekends and nights and rarely closed buildings it just seems like it goes on and on yeah. so, uh, so what we're trying to focus on is what josh has been defining for a long time is work at night clean at night and you best do it but keep enough in the mornings and the afternoons to Daytime. Well, is this something you see? So Barrow County has been doing it for four years. You see a or? lot more of it. Yeah. Okay. You, you know, like I mentioned, contract cleaning, and this is not contract cleaning is where you just you lose all control of everything. Um, and this is not. I like their. I like the contract. Reading through it, it was. Yeah. I think it's we got a good opportunity. Try it. I think we're in a situation where we need a little help as well. So. They're pretty confident they can staff us. Yeah. That's that sounds yeah. like they yeah. branch out in other fields as well, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I think the advantage what they have is, is they have a larger area. They and necessarily do. come from here. And and I agree that I work in the evenings over at one of the barrel school one other weekend. They're very hard workers. And they don't necessarily come from the right. Um, and kind of like they wear barrel shirts. Yeah. Um, that have a 
barrel cleaning staff or something on the back of some of this. Yeah, yeah, I think there's this barrel bowl that I remember. Barrel bowl, that's 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 yeah. barrel bowl cleaning. Yeah. 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 That's much like the idea of contracting it out, but this idea seems to be working. I think it's a good mix. Um, you know, and the in the help with the the real designing the, the cleaning process and uh, and the way everybody the flow of everybody the team cleaning is, I think it it could be a huge benefit for us. So from a budget standpoint, it's pretty much a wash of what we normally would. Yeah, we analyze all that. I mean, because because of um, the, the the salary of the custodian. I mean, the, the percent that our benefit cost is, it's it's very comparable. It's a great, great pilot. I think the high school is a great way to see how it works. We're not going wholesale. We're taking a point yeah. school and looking and you can see. So, appreciate it. I've been intrigued with it for quite some time. So, so this in the top flight, need action Monday night. Let me know. Yes, sir. Dr. Morris, we didn't revise the wellness policy, so there is no, there's no, yeah, okay, that's right. Thank you. All hey, right. Next one, Josh, you want to talk about Southern AB then? Sure. Um, this was, you know, the recommendation that we continue to engage with Southern AB on the, on the new elementary school or whatever it, it turns out to be. Um, we've got, a design on the building that we did build, the, the middle school that we had on Highway 53. We've also got some, some very efficient elementary school designs as well. So whichever one we end up going with, I think, I think Southern AME, uh, they proposed a really good team on this one. I think we're pretty excited with, with what we're looking at. And uh, we'd like to recommend that, that we continue to work with them through this project. We would love to get that one on the action list, so it's not fully defined yet as to what type of school, but maybe to modify it that they would we'd have an agreement with them on the new elementary or middle. Um, given the schedule, we're trying to open August 1st of 2023. Right. Uh, we have a short design window and really need to work, so they're working with now the subject. So, so they were they were selected uh, several years back for this school. They went, yeah. went through the process with the, with the previous board, and so we just want to kind of continue almost as an add-on uh, supplemental to the current agreement and work on the school and the site. Yes. They're, of course, on the middle school design. They did from Highway 53, give us full credit for that. Yeah. 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 So... Yeah, this, this seems to be more. We need to take advantage of that. That's yeah, really that's right. Right. So, okay. and Then the uh, the last one is a is kind of a matter of fact resolution, but uh, kind of crazy. But we're due for a new five year facilities plan next year. And this the Georgia DOE requires that we that you the board ask for their assistance in this process. So. This is a resolution that says, will you assist West? There's no cost to it. We've worked with them forever, um, but they come in and then we have a, I also added in there a schedule just for, I won't go through it, but you're welcome to look at it, that shows how we get from here until next March 13th is our deadline. So we'll bring you a plan approval in April. And Mr. Gilbert, it's probably a good place to interject that one of the requests, and I think it's very wise, that the board take almost a, a retreat day, half day, to really do a facility study. We've just got so much growth coming, we need to consider uh, potential of rezoning needs. So once we define what we're going to do construction-wise in the next month or two, we're proposing that in August that we look at a facilities half day or a day to just do nothing but focus on facilities plan. Yeah. If y'all are good with that, we'll, we'll find a day. Okay. And we can do whatever works for you if it's a Friday afternoon, a Saturday morning, or third, whatever. We'll, we'll pick a day that yeah, works for And I'd like to talk about something I've questioned for, since being on the board, but also uh, Gilbert brought up, I believe, his last meeting about the size of 
schools that we're building in the future. Yep. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah, so. We and would see that meeting as a more of a discussion than a presentation. Mm -hmm. We're trying to have all the facts. Because I would think we could even let the, the facilities website where we can put in what we can do scenarios, like on their website, put in numbers. Yeah. And yeah, and basically it'll tell us how much state funding we would earn or, you know, where, how we could ma maximize that funding or where we would start earning it. So you can just kind of play around in there. It's pretty, it's pretty powerful information. It's not a one size, just a simple answer. Oh, yeah. 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 Like a giant Jenga, you move one thing and the whole thing changes. Yeah. 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 Thank you, though. We appreciate that. Be great. Um, Anna, why don't we do real quick our update and then yeah. and we take a, if the board would be inclined for us to take a short break and go to executive session since Mr. McCord is here and then come back and finish up our agenda and it shouldn't take take too long. But let's go ahead. Yes, I don't think my angels are pretty because it's all amazing, amazing news. So I'm just going to tell it real fast. If you can look at it, you can see the numbers. Um, but SLOS was phenomenal again this yeah. month um close to a million dollars um up over all all measurements and significantly up over all um comparisons so that's great our total loss balance right now even with everything that's going on all the projects that we have going on right now is um over 17 million dollars so that's great we did just receive today the three million dollar um capital outlay fund funds from um, the technical college system Yay. of georgia so that will, that will go back in that that pot to reimburse so that was great um then if you want to look at the general fund it's it's a little it's little great but it's a little scary <laughs> what the fund balance is right now um but again we've had all this cares money that we've kind of been able to shift some some of the things um to that to that funding source but um, we're, we've also got, we will be having the, um, the bonus, the retention bonus coming out in the next couple of months. So that will, that will um, eat into part of that. But we're doing great. And I mean, if, if we keep on this, this, this trend, then we will absolutely, hopefully, almost absolutely, hopefully be able to significantly roll back the village. Right. That's, that's my goal. That's what I really want to see happen for the community. Um, and then for the budget to actual comparison, you can see that um, we have we are 83 percent complete, but we collected 90 percent of our revenues and only spent 81 percent of our budget expenditures. So that definitely is contributing to our fund to our fund balance. Everything is looking great. It's a great place to be. It's it a is. much better place than we've experienced mm -hmm. in years past. Mm -hmm. so. We just want to be very Absolutely. wise and thoughtful in the way that we, we go forward. So, um, the retention bonus is on there as, a, as an item, and so yes, um, our the, the board has has um, graciously supported that. We now know the governor officially signed that bill on Tuesday, I think it mm -hmm. was. Um, so we'll be processing that in everyone's May paycheck. But we do want to confirm what what the board <laughs> supports in the amount and the distribution of. of of that and our understanding is that you would like to do a thousand dollars in may and a thousand maybe in november or december yes because then that way we're actually we're paying out what we were funded mm -hmm. but then we're actually giving extra to those people that we're retaining That's that right. are not leaving yeah so is this taxed as a bonus or is this it's just taxed payroll? as a regular okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah just regular whatever it's right. added to a regular a regular monthly check. Yes, yeah. yes, it's not a separate check. Correct. I really like the piece to get part now and then around around the holidays. I think that's a great place. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah. because it is a retention bonus. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 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 I think that's but would you I mean would you would you like to do the second one in November? That way it's right before Christmas or would you rather wait till December? I I said said so, so, yeah, so just to in. play yeah. with the wording retention a little bit. I've had people ask say to me, well, was it the retention to keep me during COVID or is it a retention to keep me after? 
Oh, so that's, so that's the, the intent of the of this bonus is to keep people in the education field, yeah, to okay. keep them in education because so many people during COVID and throughout this process have been like, I don't, this is not what I'm done. That for. I'm done. Yeah, and yeah. they're leaving the education field. Yeah. So this is kind of just a little little way to try to keep say, hey, that. we we see how important you are. We know. And all right, I'm gonna say Anna Dodge said. Well, well, and I see it as a thank you for all the appreciation for all that they have yeah. done. And y'all are actually saying an extra thank you. Know, that's, that's the additional that's the additional thousand. So that's amazing. amazing. I think that's the, what it was intended mm -hmm. coming down the pike. That's right. what we thought. Yes. Yeah. And I would say thank you to Nova Vendor for the whole thing. Because a lot of people do start to shop. That's right. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think that's, that's, that's good. Good. It's Your wish is to stop the look for Whatever you say is what we'll do. And the good thing is, we are in a place that we can do that. Yes, and it's not yes. just because of CARES funds, it's because of financial efficiency that we've implemented, yes. and thanks to everybody here. But I, I think about my mind originally went to, can we afford that tax revenue? It hasn't started coming in yet, but we don't have to, we're in a good place. We're yeah. Yeah. We can't, yes. Well, and, and there's been many times when, I, well, all the educators, but the classroom teachers have really had the, Tighten Absolutely. their belts yeah. mm -hmm. yes. uh, and continue to do the the work uh, with less funds, and so it's just mm -hmm. a, I just think it's a and the confusion pat on your back. Know, big I cannot imagine. Huh? I cannot imagine. Yes. So basically, we're going through. There's no action item. No, there's no action item. No. Just, just, no. We just want to confirm, confirm. for yeah. processing purposes, and yeah. that's that's the wish of the, the full board, yeah. so that we move forward and you communicate with with. Everyone with oh, the yeah. district because we're getting lots of questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they need to know what's yeah. gonna be gonna be, yeah. Some kind of uh, press release Yes, she she has a press release. Okay. We did we did a preliminary press release, but we'll push one out if it's all right. Yeah. All right. So let me if you don't mind. So we're gonna um, with it being a work session, we should not need to amend the agenda. Is that right. accurate? That's correct. Uh, so we'll need to move into executive session. Are we going to stay here? We're, we're going to actually go? go to the teaching and learning suite and let everybody stay here, and then we'll be back in just a short while. So if I could get a motion. Uh, motion ends.
motion to come back in. So moved. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, unanimous. Uh, we're back in from executive session to discuss real estate. We took no action. Um, and we will continue back with our regular agenda. I believe we're on Roman number five. We are, yes, sir. And, and I don't think the rest of it will take us very much longer. Miss Duke is joining us um, from afar, and we thank her for joining us. Um, I have the personnel recommendation that I'll give to you before you leave today. We will uh, take any conversation. That I'll be in the office tomorrow and Monday. So if you have any, if you have any questions, feel free to call me. We do have several um, that we won't discuss right now because I want to hold off on, on those, but um, I'll give that to you. Um, and then you can see our enrollment numbers. I was pretty impressed, Martha, that um, our enrollment numbers are just, <laughs> that's crazy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you take a look, our enrollment is exactly the same as it was. Now, the, some of the schools have varied just a little bit, right. Right. but um, our enrollment is exactly 87, 17, um, and you see that our numbers continue. You Not, not that we're always looking at trend data, but Usually, we start seeing a little bit of a decrease towards the end of the school year, and we, we're not seeing that. So that just tells us what's going to happen when we go into next year, I believe. We, there's no way to predict, but I am, especially in the West community, I keep telling the schools that we have to get in a position that we are constantly evaluating and planning because we could we could gain 100 to 200 kids over the summer. Okay, That's we'll probably right. likely. We'll be over 9,000 by the time. Yeah, we may very easily be over 9,000 by the time school starts. So. That's a, growing at a pretty good clip. Um, and so outside of that, there is one item that I would really like to discuss, and Anna and, and Ms. Duke and I have talked about this. Um, we went through the process, and um, Josh had, had to do what we wanted him to do, which was go see his beautiful daughter perform in a chorus performance at Jackson County High School, so he's not with us. But he went through a process in posting some of these positions that are, as we've already discussed, terribly high need, um, HVAC, Dr. Morris has a desperate need for school nutrition employees, school bus drivers, and so forth. Once we went through that process, and Mr. I think Mr. Patton offered to several people who we were still not close to meeting what they can make in industry, we would like to, we already approved the salary schedule, and we know that, but we would like to bring this back to you, and um, Anna has made some notes, and we've discussed this. We are basically trying to become a little bit more competitive on our non-teaching side for positions like HVAC and project manager and anything that has to do with the operational side of things. So, Anna, you want to speak, basically what we did was just eliminate, <coughs> eliminate right. grade one and bump everything well, up. Well, grades one and two, actually, right. and then just kind of pushed everybody up. Yeah, a bit. but if you look at it, so I do want to, I do, want to make this point if you look especially at the um the lower grades their salary increase is somewhere between eight and fourteen percent and it that increase decreases as you go to the higher paid like if you get down to the very to the grade 32 the um pay increase is hold on a second, I have it, like a little over one percent um 1.63 percent so we were trying to increment the increases on the lowest paid yes on the lowest paid and then that increase you know decreases as you go to higher paid positions so it's not across it's not across the board five percent it's not across the board two and a half percent it is trying to increase those lower paid higher demand positions with keeping everything else on the pay scale in line that makes sense we, as you know, the primary reason that we, we brought this to you last month, we always do in April, May, or June to, to have the next year's approval. But most importantly, we were looking at our six and eight hour drivers and we bumped all of our drivers up. Then when we continued the process of some of our classified staff that we desperately need, we just, it becomes very real that we can't, we can't attract and, and, and get folks. So we feel like this will help us. This is not going to solve it. We're, we're going to be faced with this for some time to come. D Josh said he needed 20, um, 20 custodians right now. Dr. Morris, you've got 15 school nutrition employees. We were just, that's, yeah. we're just, we're just really, really struggling with, with 
filling positions like this. So, um, I mean, David, I mean, I'm very, I'm very what's leaving this year, I know what right now, that's just the start. That's the new growth. It's just yeah. where we are. So. And, and we're not the only system in, 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 with this situation. So we're, not the, we're not the only industry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a tough market to find those workers. Yeah, but I will say, if it, what the board did, Dr. Howard, what you presented and approved for the drivers is helping. Yeah. Because we are seeing um, our signs that we put out on buses, I know you've seen them, that is helping attract people. Now, we're interviewing, and, and, but I haven't, we might have five coming off of that, but it doesn't mean that we're going to start with 15 next year, but it is helping. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's better than what we had. Yeah. And I and appreciate that. I want to say thank you for that. For half of our transportation department drivers. Um, so we are seeing that spike a little bit. I just hope that we can get them in and they stay and get them trying. Yeah. And, and I think once this antibiotic, everybody that you know, the COVID thing, once that settles more and it's already beginning. Miss Langland, you're right, because during COVID we lost several drivers. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, we've had, and I think uh, you're going to see an improvement. We've had a couple come back, so I, I think that yeah. will help. But I think the, what we did, the platform and the salary adjustment, that I think that's going to help where it's beginning to get out. So um, we'll, we'll definitely monitor and do all we can. Yeah. And I have a little bit of a tall ask that I want to make you aware of. So we, we're asking for this adjustment. You, you take your time looking at it. Um, and if you have questions, please feel free to call me. Josh has been able to identify a, a qualified project manager and a qualified HVAC foreman. Um, and I would like to be able, and it would require a separate line item for approval to go ahead and bring these people on at the approved FY22 rate. Because the only way that we're going to be able to, to compete is to go ahead and start hiring at this rate. Now, technically, for everybody else, this won't start until F, until July 1. But to attract these people and get them started in June, mm -hmm. if we could go ahead and hire these new positions, that well, these additional positions that we desperately need at HVAC, it's three. It, we, we can't do that officially unless the board gives us permission to do that in an action item to accept it as an FY22 approved. So those three positions at the FY22 salary schedule um, at their higher date, which would be in the next three to four weeks if we can get them. So, so where were they, where were they again? Where were they at on the list, if you don't mind me yes, asking? Yes, sir. No, no, no. 23, range 23 to 27, those, those positions. Okay. But not the... Uh, just, just those three in yellow, not the other in yellow. It, it would be the page. yes, sir. It would be well now, the H the HVAC supervisor and the any any foreman or HVAC person that we're able to find, and they, they'd be able to be hired and the project manager at this rate. Yeah. Josh is still calling through and trying. Uh -huh. to Sir, you want to fly? He, didn't, he didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he did. I don't know. That's twice um, so we would take action on these. The revision, it would be the overall re revision. The overall revision, and then when we put the these names on the agenda that I'm going to give to you, the new hires that you've had there, it will be at the FY22 rate. And we'll put that as. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Just showing them too. Right. Too. So we, you know, we need to. They're, the higher. We're, they're okay. talking about the upgrade. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. to so long as we distinguish. That's the, the drive with new updated steps and grades. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and so we're using use this one to compare. Yes. To what right. it is today. Yes. Right. To understand. Yeah, and we can we can bring the like final product that doesn't have all the notes the and the highlights just stuff for you. And say, and then that way, that's the official one that you're. That's what that yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I want them to see this just like a conversation. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, what what do we do if this doesn't work? Um, we're going to teach some kids and empower, how to exactly change ballast, okay. and um, <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, well, uh, we've had, we do have some student workers like Dr. Morris and Mr. Patton, and, uh, and you know, you've got a few that can do certain things. We're hiring summer workers like crazy because we, we're going to take it to answer your question. I don't I, know. I, I, <laughs> it's going to be hard. I showed this, uh, I'll just give you an example. Andrew Briscoe, uh, we have a pamphlet, a brochure, or a flyer, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we, we had that prepared in May. I showed it to Andrew, and she's looking over it. We changed it. And drivers are basically handing them out, but some of the schools are handing out car ride lines. You see our signs, and we're going to put up more. We're going to try to get the word out hey, we're doing this. We, our four and six hour drivers, I've already had another county call me and say, How are you doing that? I'd like to sit down and talk to you. So I feel like we're fixing the lead, set a standard for other counties to follow what we're doing and how we're going to do it. And I will tell you that we are attracting drivers from other counties. That's good. So I'm, That's hoping, what we gotta do. I'm hoping that this, this will, is it going to solve it completely? No, sir, it's not. But I think it's going to help, hopefully, get us to the point to where we minimize. Know that we'll ever cut out. I hope we do doubling rounds. I, I do. Yeah. I don't believe that. But I will tell you that I'm hoping that this will minimize that to the extent where it's not on every. That's what we're moving for. And uh, to answer your question, Mr. Clarence, we're just going to keep plugging away. If it doesn't, we'll come up with something else. And we'll come to our board again, superintendent, and say, okay, let's try. Let's try this. Maybe this one. But I think this is a good base step, and I feel very confident that, like I told you, we're seeing a spike in people interested. What about the Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah our competition is so stiff. I received a flyer in my own mailbox from Millie. Huh? You know, $150 fine on bonus, and this, and this, and this, and this. So we'll, we'll just keep pushing. We're trying to attract moms who. question about benefits so the, the three form or the two former and the supervisor they are TRS yes okay. yes you need, you need kind of supervisory position so you all analyze that you know think about it we will bring to you this just be cleaned up without the highlights um, and, and if this is meets your like this is at least a first step and, and plan b is really going to be potentially looking at um, a, a compensation analysis and working with a firm and trying to figure out how we get competitive and it it will if we go end up going down that road it's it, it'll affect our budget because right now our operational costs have been you know much, much smaller portion of our budget but you can't provide a remarkable learning experience if you if you have a terrible experience on the bus and you can't get your food and the school is dirty. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So yeah. you gotta have this. It's a it's a package. Yeah. So yeah, it's all it's all family. Yeah, it is. All right. Well, thank you, and feel free to call myself or um, any any of us if you have questions about it. Tomorrow we have a little bit of a hero celebration in the afternoon, so if you don't get us between two and four, we are celebrating our school nutrition um, staff, but, and we welcome you to join us if you. Would. <laughs> yeah, right here. That's right. All right, um, Mr. Nicholson, you've got some folks here with you. We do, and then it's actually that conversation is a perfect segue because without a doubt, the best thing we can do for our kids is hire the best, the, the very best teachers, and then provide the training and support that uh, continues to make those teachers learn and grow and want to stay here. So um, it's actually been kind of fun because this year, the greater portion of them has been more like reactionary and 
trying to figure out at the beginning of the year how are we going to do distance learning, how are we going to do hybrid learning. So starting at say around January, we were able to actually start doing the work that is the, the proactive type of things that we normally do. So uh, the first first document that uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about is the new employee meet and greet. We we start planning the new teacher orientation in January. Uh, this is it's way too massive. We've got 100 plus people coming in, and you've got everything from an ag teacher to a pre-K teacher to to a fine arts teacher. Uh, it, it takes a lot of work, and so we kind of made the decision pretty early on because we didn't. We're still in the peak of the pandemic, and we said, well, let's go ahead and plan for professional learning to be. Um, virtual. We did that last year. It, it actually ended up working really well. Our, our teaching learning team, our, our content folks liked it. You can look on the screen, you can see somebody's name, you can see if somebody's paying attention, you can say, please turn your camera on. Uh, you know, okay. People learn to multitask, I realize as well, but we, we went ahead and made that decision, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a minute. But then we also, uh, the onboarding, I'm, I'm obviously not over HR, but the onboarding process is, is essentially a platform, a virtual platform to go to. And that was a partnership between Dr. B and Kat Flippin and the team. And they built out this really amazing uh, dashboard when you come on board and learn about your benefits. I mean, it's really streamlined the process, but it's also virtual. So when we started looking at that, I said, well, we, we are known for our relationships. I mean, people come here and they, they, without a doubt, they come here for the relationships they have with each other and the relationships they have with kids. So we thought we need to have an opportunity where we're going to be able to have some time with the, the new employee in person. So normally they would pick up a, a Chromebook or a, a laptop before they do any of those kind of uh, new teacher orientation uh, sessions. And we thought, well, they have to be in person for that. And now that we're a little bit further past the peak of the pandemic, we said, let's make this an event. So this document, I'm not going to go into great detail, but Dr. Howard, maybe if we go down to the, the page that says the uh, rotation tables. We're going to transform the Gordon Street cafeteria in the TNL space. We're using seven mindsets as our theme. And what you'll see there is, is that uh, we've got Teresa Dearman, you've already seen in the hallway that we use uh, Teresa Dearman's seven mindsets. Uh, that's our, our monthly theme. She's, she's going to be our interior designer and decorator for, for this event. And, and so, we're going to bring in, we're certainly going to give out Chromebooks, uh, but as you can look, so for instance, we're connected, well, we're playing off that term connected, connectivity, and so that's where you get your device pick up. But we didn't want them to just come pick up the device and say, well, welcome to Jackson County Schools, we'll see you later. We want to make this into a much bigger event. So uh, we've been working with vendors and getting all sorts of free giveaways. So live to give is the mindset. So some of the stuff that we want to give away, we've been able to use some care spots to actually purchase the sub mindsets book for, for all of our, our new employees. And so as you look through, you'll see that we've thematically figured out ways that we can still make sure that HR is here to answer any questions. You've gone through that onboarding, but you know, if you did your benefits on what you, you looked at the, the onboarding two months ago and you're finally coming to pick up your, your device, you probably don't remember everything that you clicked on so that you be able to have somebody to talk to. So we've got a 100% accountable um, table as well. And so our idea here is that the, our content folks, our HR, our technology, um, we're all coming together. And it's, it's not, you know, they have basically a 30 minute rotation. So that it's, it's not like it's a, a, an all-day event, but we have, um, I believe we do three sessions in May, and we've got two in June, so they can, we can personalize it, we can allow them to set to schedule a time to come, and then that way we can really do a, a welcome to Jackson County. The Sane is going to have a, a photo booth, and so we really, really wanted to be able to provide them that initial remarkable experience. Again, it's not that the, the onboarding or the new teacher orientation aren't remarkable, but Everybody's a little tired of everything always being on the other end of the computer screen. So that's something a little different. It's, it's not that cost us anything different. It's, it's just an effort that we, we wanted to take on ourselves. And so I just wanted you to know about that because uh, Dr. Howard always says you can only get one chance at a first impression. And that's one of our mantras that we live by. So we, we want to make sure that people come. Coming to Jackson County, feel love, appreciated, welcome. So um, the other thing is, is we always share this. this uh, this particular uh, work session, just so you know what's going on in the summer. And so this is our, I, I didn't do the complete professional learning calendar, I just did the, the um, summer months. And we changed the way we operated uh, new teacher orientation maybe two years ago. 
We used to have new teacher rotation. Everybody had to come on the same day. We met at East High. We would try to do different rotations. We would try to make everything fit. But, but literally, if you've got one art teacher at the high school, and you have uh, two social studies teachers, but then you have three pre-K, but then you have 25 elementary teachers, it's, it's always been very difficult to make sure that everybody gets what they what they need. You can do the welcome, and you can you can go over some of the things like the, the HR side of things, the benefits and all, but to really give them the professional learning they need, it's very difficult because if you've only got one or two, three, you know, three people, whatever, that are that are really working together on content, they can't be in more than one place at a time. So we started doing a June session and a July session. They get to choose. They can actually do an intermix of June session and July session. So if you're an elementary teacher and you want to do the June dates for the literacy, but you want to do the July dates for math, um, you can do that. So it really allows us to be able to, to personalize that, try to practice what we teach, because that is one of our goals is to personalize the learning experience. And so what you'll see here is um, some of our in-house professional learning around Empower and our design teams, but then you'll also really see how we're, we're scheduling our new teacher orientations. And those are, as I mentioned, virtual. The, the benefit from the, the, the new teacher, the new employee side is that they don't necessarily have to worry about childcare. You know, they, they can, they choose, they can actually um, be out of town and still participate in the professional learning. And then what we're able to do too is, is the folks that, that lead that content is teaching learning team members, but also we tap in to our instructional coaches and some of our, our, our teacher leaders. It allows them to be able to have smaller groups that are really concentrated. So if we're look, if we're just going to talk about K two literacy, we can do a half day on K two literacy, and then that that same person can turn around and do three five literacy on a different day or, or or later in that day. So it spreads everything out. It means that we repeat things a lot, but it also is what we ask our teachers to do. If you're personalizing the experience, it, one size doesn't fit all. So it we spend all summer with professional learning, uh, and this summer is no different. But just wanted you to. Um, kind of see what's going to happen um, because of some of the changes that are taking place with, with Jackson County High School with that transition. We're hosting some of their professional learning here at Gordon Street as well. So it, there's this this myth that summer is a slow time. <laughs> but it's, it's, really, busy. it's really it's really nice. The one thing I will tell you that, that um, we're we're also being very cognizant of is uh, somebody said it earlier, our, our teachers are tired. So we're, we're really not asking anybody. Normally, we would pull our design teams together. We would do a lot of curriculum development. We're, we're, that is purely voluntary. We, if, if you, if some people love to do that. Some people, if that is the way they re-energize, some people want to go to the beach. And so we're, we're, not, we're not doing nearly as much of that as we normally would, just out of respect for the fact that, that everybody, I mean, our teachers can really do. So that normally, we would have a little bit more of that going on. But, uh, it allows us to, to really pour into uh, the new teacher orientation as well as our leadership retreats and other things that we, we do. So that's that's there for your review. Um, I gave you a copy, and this is really more out of recognition. You should have a hard copy. Um, I, I just we need to use the opportunity to thank our high schools, our high school leaders, um, our sister principals. We, we've had Martha and Sandy every Wednesday working with Jesse Wood and Danny Waxter, we have we had um, uh, Indra, Kendrick Indra, Peter, Indra, Melissa, Melissa Gillespie, uh, we bring Chanda Palmer in, Jason Wester in. We gave them like a near impossible charge. We said, because personalized learning experience, that's been a goal for, for now like seven years. We said, if you're gonna schedule, let's schedule as one high school, like one high school entity, East High, Jackson County, and Power. And let's give every child their first choice. So they've been working towards that. In theory, that sounds like okay. We give everybody their first choice, and then we just plug everything else in. There, it, it, it's been very complex, and they have done an amazing job working towards it. And this schedule really is just a representation of, of the fact that we are going to be able to have kids housed at, at the base schools and taking some of their courses. Some kids traveling over to Empower, some kids spending all day on an A day or a B day at Empower, vice versa, all day uh, on an A or B day at home. Some kids will be traveling midday. It has been a labor of love. Um, we've learned a lot. I, in fact, when we do this again, we, we, now we know what we need to do. But when you embark on something you've never done before, you, you just run play after play after play. Uh, we've really, really learned a great deal and, and know how we can refine the process. So this, this schedule is just, 
you know, just so you can see that we haven't talked about that in a while because it's just taken a while to figure that out. Um, we do have some ideas that over the course of next year we're going to bring to you about how we might want to modify the high school schedule um, in terms of you know, variations of, of block and seven period days and six period days. But we were exploring it that right now we're sticking with the schedule that we, we have right now. Uh, it does have some travel time within day embedded in it, and it still has that time where, where students are going to go into the TAA and seven mindsets and um, professional skills. So. Really, this is a representation as a thank you. Martha's very modest, so, so I want, want her to sit up here and she, she led that work. I've seen many of here. Uh, I don't know of a district that's done this before because there are easier ways to do it. You just plug kids in, and it works, it works. And again, prioritizing relationships in Jackson County and personalizing experience, nothing easy about that. But things that are worth doing aren't usually easy. So, um, pause for any questions, feedback about any of those, those items. I'm certainly happy to. It's late and folks are tired, but I think it's very important that we mention we still are looking at about 1,400 students who will be going to Empower for either a portion of their day um, or all day, one day, and so forth. So 1,400 students having access is pretty exciting. About 400 of those are full-time, and so that's, that's going to be really exciting. I also think it's important that Anna and I are continuing to work with the high schools, and um, there there may be some need for some additional uh, high school numbers. Um, I know you know I mentioned to you that Empower is going to need uh, an additional language arts teacher, math teacher, science teacher. So um, they worked really diligently to try to pull folks from the high school, but the way that the way that it's configured right now it's going to be difficult to do that. Um, it's really going to be difficult to do that. I think, to just be very honest with you, there is this implementation year that we're going to have to, to, to have this, and I hope that we can get your support on that. And then, like Todd said, we study how we can evolve and become have more kids spend all day there. But part of it is it's new. All families and students are they're learning. Nobody wants to jump with all fours and, and go head, head first, not knowing exactly what they're getting into. The most important thing that I think we can do is make sure that Dr. Blackburn and Mr. Easler provide the most amazing experience, and we support that so that those kids want to go. And we can, over time, then become, um, we can use attrition to, to reduce it. Please. It, it's late, but can I ask a question? Please do. Well, I kept quiet in there. Oh, you, you, do any, oh, you are the board <laughs> chair. You can say <laughs> do anything you want. Um, any board member can. How, now that um, dual enrollment students um, will, will be here at Empower, what, how has that been going? Is that, in, in mixing it in with space and, and students, is that how, do, can, can you update me on So this actually works really well for dual enrollment students because dual enrollment students are either coming on a Monday, Wednesday, or a Tuesday, Thursday anyway. Okay. Um, we actually have some dual enrollment students for Lanier Tech, which is an absolute praise because, um, you know, it's, it's actually been very sparse in the, the past with the involvement with um, um, Lanier Tech. And so... This schedule works really well for them, um, and you know there could potentially be a student that comes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to take dual enrollment classes, but that wouldn't be any different if they were on a traditional college campus anyway, because that's the way classes are scheduled. Um, they're pretty much scheduled for the morning time right now. Um, we are looking at uh, the possibility of trying to do some dual enrollment in conjunction with uh, Foothills in the evening time. Um, with some of the labs, you have to be certified to do technical programs before they can offer certifications. And since we don't have those labs up and functioning yet, that actually takes, there has to be visits and stuff. So the earliest we could possibly do some dual enrollment in the technical areas would probably be January. But again, we could do that in the evening time for some, for students who are, have got a full load in their during the day and wanted to come at night to do that. And then that, that will also serve um, uh, the Foothills students very well. So 
the partnership is going great. There's an opportunity, uh, a tremendous opportunity for growth yet. Uh, and we're working on that. And both schools are pushing dual enrollment with their students. And um, this it's going to work well. Are, are we able to, to meet the need at the school and not have as many travel to another campus to be? That, that was, that's been the, some of the issues and things that I've heard in the past, and people are wondering and asking what, what it is going forward. Especially on the west side of the community, you know, with East Jackson, it was very simple for those to stay in the school for students. Often in the west side, they were going to Gainesville or other places because that was more convenient to drive them all the way to East. Um, we don't have dual enrollment numbers from the colleges yet. We've got kids that are still going through the process. Uh, my daughter is going to be a dual enrollment student and has not signed up for classes yet. Um, that's coming, but um, there's actually more students in dual enrollment than we've had in the past. So, Excellent. Um, as far as what they're, at least the ones that they are anticipating being in dual enrollment. It's, you know, we should be able to service yes. them here. Well, that's, that's, we've, they, got that's word, we've got plenty of space to service. So if, if if they wanted to have three or four teachers per content area and, and you and me could support that, bring them on in Lynn Air Tech, we've got plenty of space for them to do that dual enrollment in the Empower Center and without having to go. I visited the dual enrollment night um, at Jackson County High School and I was super impressed. And I, that's the most parents I've ever seen in one. And I think placing it at Empower and being more central, we're just going to see that exponentially increase. I think it's really going to be. I think that's the reason why most, you know, it was just as closer in proximity for a lot of the folks on the west side to go to Gainesville. Well, now it's going to be much closer, obviously, to go to Empower. Yeah. Yeah. And we're providing right. transportation in that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, that's right. That's such a game changer for so many families. And sure. we I hope we get to a point, we've been saying this for five years now, that a kid can actually walk across the stage and get their associate's degree. And I mean, they have to pay. I know 30 hours is the cap, but they have access at that level they so do. that they could actually walk across the stage and get their high school diploma or two years of college. And those students who are tech on the technical track, um, the reality is that if they go in one of these critical need areas, like when we get welding up and running in some of the nursing, the whole grant would kick in and they could still graduate with zero college expense. They, they wouldn't have to pay to go beyond 30 hours. They could, they could get into that whole uh, grant piece of that. So there's lots of options. This Tell them, I know it's late, but tell them what we've got over in terms of weld ready. The, the Barrow that you may have already shared, but the eight, the eight or 12 folks, the students at Barrow who did this and it's on our campus soon, all of them were placed in the average salary, I think was $52,000 a year. Yeah. So Kubota has said right now with Foothills, they're doing a well breading program at East. And that started Monday night and will run uh, for two months. They will um, uh, come out with a basic welding certificate, not, a, not a, an actual certification. But Kubota said with overtime and entry level that those students could start off and they would hire them as long as they made it through the program uh, with overtime and make $52,000 a year uh, starting right out of high school. In this construction ready program, and I mentioned this to Don earlier, we're doing that with uh, our students who are getting ready to graduate or freshly graduated to get them some basic credentials in construction to go into entry level construction positions. And we're working with, uh, with our partners to try to find placements for those um, so that those students who don't aren't going on to college or even know what they want to do, they have an opportunity to get into a high skill highway side to man career. And um, it's, it's going to be great. And right now, I think we're at about 14 students in that program. Um, and hopefully we'll continue to, but we're hoping to get 21 young people in that one. Uh, that'll happen this summer from beginning of June to July the 2nd, I think. Really I can listen to this for another hour. This is good stuff. Yeah, it is. Really, really it is exciting. It is. Sure. I enjoy hearing this. It's great for our kids. It's really good. You know, and just the conversation we had prior to that about the desperate need. I mean, it, it is their market right now. It's their marketplace. If they just get the skills, they can do it. So. All right. Um, is that enough? <laughs> That's all we have. So.
guess we stand adjourned. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, Monday. Yes, sir. Y'all have some things to look at. Please don't forget.